Never Stop Learning Week 150, I'm going to take a look at how to use the Properties panel with your layer masks in Adobe Photoshop. Alright, so I'm going to hit Command N to create a new document and in the presets I'm going to choose Web and this size right here is just fine. I got 1024 by 768 just in case you want to follow along. I'll click OK to accept that and here I have this blank document with a white background. So if you hit D on your keyboard it gives you the default of a uh, black foreground with a white background and I'm on a Mac so I'm going to hold down the Option key and then hit Delete and that's going to fill this guy in with the foreground color. So over here I'm going to hit the uh, option right here to add a new layer and that has this blank layer here. I want to fill that in with yellow so over here in the swatches panel I'm going to select that yellow color and you see it comes into the foreground so I'll hold down the option key and then hit delete and that's going to fill this in with yellow. I'm going to hit my M key now and that's going to give me the marquee tool and if you take a look over in my tools panel you see I have the elliptical marquee tool so I just click and drag and so that it comes out from the center I'm going to hold down the option key and introduce the shift key to keep everything proportional. Alright, I'll release my mouse once I'm happy with the size and now what I'm doing is actually selecting whatever is inside of the circle so this is being targeted and whatever is outside is actually going to be ignored. So let's come over here to the layers panel and choose this option here to add a layer mask. When I click on it you see it's uh, made this layer mask for me right away and it's even targeted you can tell by this frame here and if I option click on it it actually brings us into this mask. So what's going on here is that whatever is in white allows you to see this layer and whatever is in black is uh, concealing this layer which allows you to see everything below which in this document is actually a black layer. So if we had any gray here it would allow you to see some of this layer depending on how dark or how light that gray is. Alright so I'm going to get out of this layer mask by option clicking on it and now I have this artwork right here. So while I have my mask selected I'm going to come over to the window menu scroll down until I find properties click on that and that brings up this properties panel. All right, so I'm just going to focus on these two sliders for now. Uh, when you grab this feather slider, click and drag it towards the center. And look, it's added some feathering over here around this mask for me. Uh, I could enter in a specific value right here if I'd like. And you see it's updated right away. Uh, I could feather this all the way just to show you the extreme version of that. All right, I'm going to reduce this down to zero and now talk about this density. So this is referring to the density of the mask that's covering this layer. So if I reduce this, it's not going to be as dense as it was before. So let me option click on it. Now you see it's actually gray. So that means it's allowing us to see some of this layer here. When I option click on it, that's why you see that it's uh, partially yellow here. If I reduce this density down to zero, you see uh, basically there is no layer mask anymore. So I'll increase the density little by little just to uh, bring that point all the way home. All right, here we are. Just wanted to give you an idea of what these two sliders do. So let's see this in action on some uh, workflow stuff. All right, I'll hide this properties panel here and uh, I'm going to get rid of this layer for now. Okay, uh, what I'd like to do is lay out some new text. I'm going to hit the T key on my keyboard and just click once in the center of my document. Uh, you can lay out whatever text you like. I'm going to go with Adobe Grind and then command enter to accept that. Now this is really small here so over here at the top I'll bring this up to 72 actually command T to get this little bounding box and I just click and drag uh, hold down the shift key to keep everything proportional again and uh, let's see this looks good to me alright so enter to accept that and I can still do a couple more edits I'm just gonna select this word grind and hold down the option key and use the up arrow key to bring this guy up uh, because it was set to auto, it brought it all the way to the top. Not to worry, just uh, hold down the option key and keep, just keep hitting down the arrow key. All right, right that looks good. Command shift greater than to uh, increase the size of my font a little bit. Option and the right arrow key is going to affect the tracking to spread it out a little bit further. And the left arrow key will bring it back in for me. So I'm going to hit command enter to accept that change. Now that I have my text set up, what I want to do is uh, create a little bit of a weathering effect. First I'm going to create a texture and then I'm going to bring it back in here and use that properties panel to finish off the effect. Alright so I'm going to base it off of this document so I'll come over here to image, duplicate and then just click OK. So it's made a duplicate of that original document. 
I don't need this text, but what I do need to do is actually enlarge this document a bit. So I'm going to hit Command minus a couple times to zoom out. Hit the C key on my keyboard to give me the crop tool. And I'm just going to click and drag in this upper right section. Hold down the Shift key to keep everything proportional. And what I'm trying to do is get that little crosshairs to match up in the upper right corner of my original document. All right, I'll release my mouse once I have it how I'd like it. I'll hit Enter Return on my keyboard to accept it. And now what I want to do is hit the D key on my keyboard to give me the default of a black uh, foreground with a white background. And uh, let's come over here to the filter menu. Scroll down until you find render. And then choose this option for clouds. When you click on it, you see it fills in your layer with this uh, clouds effect here. If I hit command F, it'll reapply that filter and just give me a different variation. All it's doing is uh, just randomizing it for you over and over again until you get some clouds that you're happy with. All right, I like this one mainly because it looks like a pretty even play between black and white here. So I'm going to use this uh, by hitting Command A to uh, select it all, Command C to copy it, and I'm going to head back over here to this other document. I'm going to hit the V key to get out of the, the crop tool, and Command V to paste this guy in. Now, because it's larger than my document, when I hit Command T, you see it's coming off the edge here. So hit Command 0, and that's going to allow you to see your entire bounding box. And just click and drag in from the center. Hold down the Shift key. All right, that looks good. Enter or return to accept that. Command 0 to bring in your whole document. All right, now make sure this layer is targeted. Come over to the Select menu, Color Range. And I'm going to choose this uh, white color here. I'll click OK, and now I have my selection here. I don't need this layer to be visible anymore, so I just click on the eyeball to hide it. And I want to target my text layer. All right, again, let's uh, apply a layer mask to this. So right here at the bottom, add layer mask. I'll click on that. And it's gone ahead and applied that layer mask to this. So this looks great. I have it targeted. I'm going to hit Command I to invert that. And it's done a good job, but I actually don't like that it's only focused on this area. So I'm going to hit Command I again, because even though it's covered most of this stuff, we, we get a chance to uh, make some changes over here in the properties panel. So over here with the feathering, I'll click and drag towards the right. And look, it's actually blurred out uh, my mask a bit. So it's softened up all these edges for me. So I really don't like that effect too much. But if you like it for your workflow, go ahead and take a look at that. I'll leave it set to zero for now. And I'll come back over here to this density section. So I'll bring that towards the center. And that's the effect I'm going for right there. I really like how I have a little bit of black, a little bit of uh, the yellow still in here. So this is an effect that I would normally do uh, when I'm working on my t-shirt printing. Uh, let's say they want an effect where they have a distressed look to their text or they want to make it look as though the t-shirt has been worn or washed several times throughout the year. And we're able to achieve that, that effect really easy using this properties panel here. And there you have it folks, that's how you use the properties panel along with the layer masks in Adobe Photoshop CC.